exploration of altered dominant. In this video, we're gonna look at Charlie Parker's secret nine note bebop scale. Before we get into the alter dominant version, let's take a quick look at Charlie Parker's playing and where this nine note bebop scale exists so we can learn it directly from him, figure out what the rules are that are governing it, and apply it to the alter dominant version. Check out his opening riff in Billy's Bounce. Super famous riff. If you go and listen to 10 versions of Billy's Bounce from the legends, probably half of them start their solo off with this exact riff. But Beyond us just memorizing a classic old school bebop riff, let's actually look under the surface at how there's a nine note bebop scale hiding inside of this. The defining characteristic of a bebop scale is that it puts the important chord tones on important beats. So we have stable note, tension note, stable note, tension note, stable. If you've ever looked at any Barry Harris material, the sixth diminished scale is exactly this pattern. Tonic note, diminished note, tonic, diminished, tonic, diminished, tonic, diminished, tonic. Because it's always built in this stable tension, stable tension zone, it always comes in groupings of two notes. So you have an in note and an out note. But if we check out Charlie Parker's riff here, he's putting the important chord tones on beats one and three based on the sound of F major. <laughs> but he's not playing groupings of two notes. He's playing groupings of three. F note, root, third, fifth. We could continue this all the way up to the 13th fret F, and we would have a full octave of a nine pitched bebop scale. This works because Charlie Parker is playing groupings of three notes. He's playing a strong note and then two tension notes. Strong note, two tension notes, strong note two tension notes, strong note. If you tried to play this riff in even eighth notes, it would not work. And that is one of the downsides of traditional bebop scales. As soon as you wanna play a triplet or a quarter and then two eighths the way Charlie Parker does, the bebop scale doesn't work anymore. By looking at the F major triad and filling in two extra pitches in between every set of triad notes, we now have a nine note bebop scale. It's not a traditional bebop scale. You're probably not gonna learn it in college, but it's straight out of Charlie Parker's vocabulary. So it's as authentically bebop as any other bebop scale. Okay, let's apply this back to our alter dominant study that we've been going through. We're playing over E alter dominant, and we're using Bill Evans's concept of the C major triad in the right hand. So we're gonna add two tension notes between every set of C major triad tones. So from C up to E, we're gonna add two extra notes. It's not F melodic minor, it's not an eight note bebop scale, it's a nine note bebop scale built on C major triad that we're using over E alter dominant. Resolving to A minor. It does change ever so slightly when you play this ascending versus descending, so make sure you check out the PDF to find the exact right set of notes to keep that line flowing smoothly. And make sure you resolve to the tonic chord. In the next video, we're gonna talk about how to use that C major triad again to turn this into a chord scale, a harmonized alter dominant bebop scale using cool pianistic cluster voicings. I'll see you there when you're ready.